This is Eureka Math Grade 2, Module 4, Lesson 4, and we're going to show an interesting way to visualize addition and subtraction using tape diagrams. And again, you have to remember that all this is about developing number literacy in our child so that mathematics is not just memorization or intimidation. It's a useful tool in the world, and we're just trying to help them visualize it in a way to make sense. And so for this first one, we say draw and label a tape diagram, subtract tens, and write the new number sentence. Okay, so what we mean by tens is um, here I'm subtracting 9, right? So I had 23 minus 9. Well, it's easier to subtract measurements of 10. So you see in my diagram I have this 9, and in this blank I'm going to write plus 1, because when I do that, I end up with 10. Okay, and subtracting 10 is not too hard. All right, now, but if I add 1 to that, I'm also going to add 1 to the 23. And that way, in our mind, the difference between these two new values is the same as they were because I added one to both. And if you think down the road to algebra, this is at like adding plus one on both sides of my equation. When I add one to 23, I end up now with 24. So where I did have 23 minus nine, I now have 23 plus one, which is 24, minus nine plus one, which is 10. And see, this is the same as what we had. Equality has been held. And now 24 minus 10 is much easier to calculate as 14. Okay, and we're going to go over several examples of that. Now let me show you how addition works. So this time I'm going to draw and label a tape diagram to add the tens and then write a new number sentence. Okay, so here's what I have. I have 29 and 46. Okay, so what our child is going to do is they're going to draw a tape diagram here and they're going to mark this off as 29 and 46. Now this rectangle is just representing the sum of 29 and 46, right? And its total length, we have length 29 and length 46. Whatever this length is, is the answer that we're looking for, the 29 plus 46. All right, now, just like subtraction, it's easier to add multiples of 10 than it is to add, for example, 29. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take away something from the 46, because you remember 46 would just be like 46 objects. I'm gonna relocate one of those objects to go with the 29. And the reason I did that is because now that 29 and 1 makes a 30. However, if I peeled off that 1, you can think of it like this. I asked that 1 to leave the classroom to go to a different classroom. So where there were 46, there are now 45. Okay, so I have 45 in the 1 classroom and then I have the 29 plus the 1 more to get 30. And now where I did have 29 plus 46, I now have 30 plus 45, and adding multiple tens is pretty easy, so I end up with 75 as an answer. And that's how it works. Okay, now I'm gonna do a couple more for both of these. Let's do some subtraction first, then we'll come back to addition. Okay, so in part B here, I have 32 minus 19, and um, I gotta fill out these rectangles, okay? So in the bottom here, I have 19, and the top I have 32. And what I wanna do is I want to subtract a multiple of 10 instead of just 19. So I'm gonna say plus one here. So that gives me a new number sentence. I have, I know at least part of this, I have a minus 20. And if I added one to the 19, I better add one to the 32 as well. And so that way I get 33 right here. So 32 minus 19 is the same thing as 33 minus 20. And that's the whole point. And the reason we do that again is because subtracting 20 is easier than subtracting 19 mentally. So now I say 33 minus 20 and I just end up with 13 very quickly. Okay, let's do part C and this time we have to draw our diagrams ourselves. All right, so I'm going to draw this bottom diagram here and the top one and then the bottom one I have a 29 and the top one I have a 50. All right, and I want to do the same thing, okay? So I don't want to subtract 29. I'm going to add one. So when I do that, that means I'm gonna have a minus 30 in my new sentence. But if I add one to 29, I'm gonna add one also to 50, which means I have 51. So 50 minus 29 is a little bit more difficult than 51 minus 30. And when I do that, I can quickly see I get the value 21. See how this works? All right, let me do one more with part D. So we have 47 minus 28. So I'm gonna draw my two rectangles here, my two tape diagrams. In the bottom one, I'm gonna have 28. And the top one, I'm at 47. Oh, and I like this example because now plus one doesn't work, right? I need to 
build the 28 up to a 10, what I'm actually going to do is add a plus 2. And so that would be a minus 30 in my new statement here. And instead of 47, I have to do plus 2 again. So I have a 49 minus 30. And again, 49 minus 30 is easier to calculate mentally than 47 minus 28. And so I can see quickly then 49 minus 30 would be the value 19. And so that's how this is working, right? We build up the what we're subtracting, we build up to a multiple of 10, and then we take it away. Okay, so let's practice some more of the addition. All right, so in B we have uh, 38 plus 45. So I'm going to draw a diagram here. And in this diagram I have a 38 and a 45. And now I have the option to make one of these a multiple 10. And I think the easiest way to do this is to pick the one closest to what 10 is. So I'm going to go with a 38. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move 2 over to make the 38 into a 40. All right, so now these two become 40. And what may be helpful to tell your child is, look, if I move two people out of the room of 45 over to the room of 30, how many are left in this room? Well, there's now there's only 43 left, right? And so what I have then, instead of saying 38 plus 45, I'm going to say 40 plus 43. And that's an easy thing to calculate. I can easily see that that is 83 which is the whole point of this. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's try part C. So I have 61 plus 29. All right, so I'm going to draw my tape diagram, and I have a 61 here and a 29. And uh, this time, if I'm trying to get to a multiple of 10, well, it's kind of a tie, really, which one's closer. Um, let's go ahead and move one guy over from the 61. So the one person leaves that room and goes over with the 29. And so now that becomes 30. And what I'm left with on the other side is 60 because that one person left the room, right? So now I have a 60 plus 30, which ends up being 90. Okay, and let's try this again with part D here. So I have 27 and 68. So let me put my barrier here. I have 27 and 68. So I'm thinking I want to get one of these to a multiple of 10. The 68 is the closest in this case. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask two people to move over to the 68, right? So I'm asking two people to leave the room of the 27 to go to the 68. And the reason I did that again is because now that group is 70 even. And the 27 becomes just 25. So now I have 25 plus 70, which is an easier thing to calculate mentally than 27 plus 68. And I can quickly see here that that's what, 95. So again, what we're trying to illustrate is that adding and subtracting multiples of 10 is easier to, than adding or subtracting something like 27 and 68, for example. And so these tape diagrams are a quick way to visualize how to do that. And what they're really doing here is balancing an equation. We don't need to tell them that right now. But I think this analogy of someone leaving a room and moving to another in terms of the addition is helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd be glad to help. It's okay to have some frustration with mathematics, but what we want is for our kids to have a better understanding of it, and I'll be happy to help any way I can. Again, if you have any questions, and thanks for watching. <laughs>